What are you reading? This is a very important question, one that emphasizes the essence of how we nurture our brains. The human mind is probably the most powerful tool in the world. It is feared by every other creature on the planet. The power of the human mind is the reason why one of the physically weakest of Earth's inhabitants has risen to become the most dominant species on the planet. Studies have shown that staying mentally stimulated can slow the progress of, and possibly even prevent, Alzheimer's and dementia, since keeping your brain active and engaged prevents it from losing power. Just like any other muscle in the body, the brain requires exercise to keep it strong and healthy. So the phrase, use it or lose it, is particularly apt when it comes to your mind. Doing puzzles and playing games such as chess have also been found to be helpful with cognitive stimulation. Everything you read fills your head with new bits of information and you never know when it might come in handy. The more knowledge you have, the better equipped you are to tackle any challenge you'll ever face. Additionally, here's a bit of food for thought. Should you ever find yourself in dire circumstances, remember that although you might lose everything else, your job, your possessions, your money, even your health, knowledge can never be taken from you. This is why university education is crucial. It helps young minds develop the expertise to rise up to any societal challenge and succeed. However, what is the quality of university education that Nigerians receive? How much investment has been made over the years to boost this quality? These are the questions that the Tertiary Education Trust Fund tackles on a daily basis. One of the agency's prime objectives is to ensure that Nigerian universities rank as high as possible on the international scale. These are the chronicles of the journey to institutionalize research and development in Nigeria. Hello and welcome to this edition of TED Fund, The Paradigm Shift. I am Stanley Bentu. Now over the past year, our production crew has visited a number of tertiary education institutions around the country. In those visits, we have been blown away by the sheer number of infrastructure projects executed by TED Fund. In fact, it has gotten to the point where you could pretty much comfortably say that as far as infrastructure is concerned, our higher learning institutions have very little or nothing to fear. But all of that infrastructure would serve no purpose if the quality of education received within those walls is not of such quality that a Nigerian graduate can conveniently function anywhere in the world. Now for this reason, TED Fund is very focused on the content component of higher learning, the faculty and the facilities. It is the quality of both along with a strategic curriculum that will propel Nigerian universities, polytechnics and colleges of education to the top of global rankings. Now the executive secretary of TED Fund, Professor Suleiman Elias Bogoro, expatiates on this. But we can make a difference and uh, I can tell you caught me on this. Uh, my intention is to play my role in TED Fund to so change the rating and ranking as well as respectability of our universities, our polytechnics, our college of education to the extent that we'll have a reverse uh, brain drain. Uh, attracting scholars across. When we were undergraduates in those days, in the, in the late 70s, uh, early 80s, we had a number of African countries coming 
Now it is the reverse. It is Nigerians that are going to those same African countries. We can reverse it, and uh, we are strongly beginning to do that. We are equipping our laboratory rather than just saying we have we built a building called laboratory, but you go in that there is no, there are no equipment. We are saying no. We must equip our laboratories to the extent where just we just came from Egypt a few days ago. There are agri research institutes. Go there and see cutting edge uh, laboratory equipment, cutting edge, the most modern. They are there and they are certified reference laboratory. Where do you find the best universities in the world? Well, pretty much anywhere, including Nigeria. In recent times, you can find plenty of top-ranked Nigerian universities that take their rightful place amongst some of the biggest international universities out there. Nigeria's universities, colleges, medical schools, engineering schools and law schools are highly respected and they're well known in the top tier academic communities. They also continue to offer prestigious masters, bachelors and PhD programs for smart driven adventurers. World University Rankings was created by Times Higher Education and they base their rankings on the university's research reputation and how often academic papers are produced by these universities. The Times Higher Education World University Rankings 2020 include more than 1,600 universities across 99 countries and territories, making them the largest and the most diverse university rankings to date. Now, in that table, the University of Ibadan ranked within the top 500, the highest from Nigeria, and it scored 12.6% in research, 23.4% in teaching, 91.2% in citations, 35.3% in industry income, that's on average, and 32% on international outlook. Now, if we compare that to the University of Cape Town, which was ranked first in South Africa and in Africa in general, the university scored 41.4% in research, 31.4% in teaching, 85.5% in citations and 56.4% in income industry and lastly 80% on international outlook. Now these nine universities make up Nigeria's top 10 which featured in the rankings. Covenant University Ota was placed at number two, Obafemi Awolowo University was number three, University of Nigeria is fourth, University of Lagos is fifth, University of Port Harcourt came in at 6th place. Others are Ahmed Dubello University at 7th. Federal University of Technology Akure is 8th. Landmark University is 9th position. And rounding up the top 10 is the Federal University of Technology Mina. However, the challenge is that apart from the University of Ibadan, no other Nigerian universities feature in the top 500 in the world. And this is a challenge that TED Fund is determined to rectify through its interventions. There are other rankings which feature a broad range of criteria. Academic ranking of world universities was created by Shanghai Jiao Tong University, focuses on the number of award-winning scientists, most cited researchers from the listed universities and their contribution to the scientific community. QS World University rankings created by top universities it surveys a big number of um, academic experts about the reputation of universities and also measures the quality of teaching. Best Global Universities Rankings, created by US News and World Report, analyzes university graduation rates and how many students remain enrolled in the second year of studies. It also surveys university representatives on the performance of the other universities. TEPFUN's ambition is that Nigerian universities will rise to the top regardless of whatever standards are set for rating the quality of education that they impart on development, technology, research, development, and the global economy. Well, now that all that is sorted in today's appetizer, it's time for the main course. And the latter part of December 2021, TED Fund and its strategic partners converged on the NAF Conference Center in Abuja. 
The objective of the workshop was quite simple. Now, just to paraphrase, the purpose was to decide how best the quality of Nigerian university education can be improved to the point where the institutions themselves would achieve a higher prestige in the international community. The report. Top minds and stakeholders in the Nigerian academia gathered at the NAF Conference Centre to engage in an intensive discussion and other activity on the ranking of Nigeria universities globally. At this capacity building workshop, which was held in Abuja, that's the nation's capital city, the focus was on developing the university's tools located in the northern region of the country to operate in the 21st century. In the preceding week, a similar workshop was hosted in Lagos to strategize the universities located in the south. The details of that event will be covered in the next edition of the program. In Abuja, Tesfan's executive secretary, that's Professor Suleiman Elias Bogoro, kicked things off on day one of the workshop with his welcome address during which he emphasized that technology has taken center stage as the main driver of economic development, especially today in the digital age. In his view, any nation which does not embrace research and development will continue to remain dependent. In education at all levels, education is a critical ingredient for nation building as it continues to be a beacon for the sustainable existence of society and the panacea for the survival of the human race. Through education, knowledge is acquired and skills are gained. The well-being and survival of mankind largely depends on what man has learned and what he, can, he or she can do for himself or herself. The very fact that the survival of humanity is dependent on knowledge makes the need for education indispensable. Many of the great nations that we see today as giants were able to attain such highs through education and the quest for knowledge. Consequently, nations and citizens are compelled to either develop or remain as second-class nations that will continuously depend on and serve other nations that have advanced through learning and research. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, this has remained the basis for our desire as a nation to continue to invest in education and learning particularly at the tertiary level, until we are able to catch up with the advanced world. It is only by so doing that we can transit from a consumer nation to a producing and exporting nation. Universities have played a critical role in the progress and development of all advanced nations over time. It is said that no nation rises above the quality of its universities. Through the wider impact of research, universities have transformed the lives of people and nations. Research in universities have provided ideas on which future prosperity are to be founded. Unfortunately, today, in the global ranking of universities, Nigerian universities are not doing very well. According to the World Ranking Review, considering four selected different rankings, among others, such as CNT Latin Ranking, Shanghai Jiaotong Academic Ranking, uh, QS World University Ranking, and Thai Higher Education World University Ranking. Universities from the USA and UK and Europe generally dominate the list of the different rankings. We know this as a matter of fact. Anyway, the QS 2021 Ranking mostly featured the Harvard, Oxford, MIT, California uh, Technology, Cambridge, uh, ETH Zurich, Imperial College, UCL, and the University of Chicago as the top 10 highest ranking universities in the world. Other Nigerian universities are uh, in the top 1,000 of the THE table are the University of Lagos and the Covenant University of Ottawa. Uh, University of Lagos between 501 to 600 and Covenant between 601 to 608. In the 2021 THT term, Lagos State University Ojo was ranked 500 between 500 to 600 and was the second university in Badan that year. Worthy of note is the increasing performance 
of Asian University's World Ranking Table. Professor Bogoro's speech was quickly followed by remarks from the Executive Secretary of the National Universities Commission, Professor Abubakar Rashid. He stressed the need for capacity building to promote multiple perspectives through the acquisition of PhDs and other higher degrees from institutions all over the world by university staff. The capacity building, first, that of staff development in universities, getting our faculty, our staff, to acquire PhDs from various universities in the world to promote these multiple perspectives in our educational enterprises in the universities. So we are very happy that TechFund has sustained that and now has followed it up with capacity building for all the faculties like me and my colleagues here, vice chancellors, attending some conferences at home and abroad on key issues of this. So, uh, in the final analysis, let me once more congratulate the third fund for joining the LGC and working to promote one area that has been of great concern to us and the Commission, and that is the University ranking. Tech Fund currently is the only interventionist agency that has now taken over and is doing more. Go to any university, subtract Tech Fund, the university is going to be So the university equals to So we commend, we are happy with Step Fund, but we also want to draw our attention that in order to compete with the Asian universities we are talking about in China, in Singapore, in Malaysia, we need more sustained funding. The chairman of the Tetfan Board of Trustees, Alhaji Kashim Ibrahim Imam, also presented an address in which he reeled out some of the key interventions of Tetfan, specifically in the area of critical infrastructure and high impact projects. We have invested in more than the construction of more than 10,000 10, units of critical infrastructure across the Nigerian universities and polytechnics and colleges of education. So much so that if you visit the universities, all the structures on the different campuses, uh, you see a uh, telephone from board written on them. The second critical area is in the field of academic staff training and development. And without training our lecturers, we will not be talking about rankings at all. Telephone has trained in the past 10 years more than 30,000 scholars <laughs> to PhD and master's degree. For the year 2021 alone, our investment in this field is in excess of 30 billion naira. Now, um, additionally, the years and the, the two, both of them spoke about the fact that we have invested in research, we are investing in research, we will continue to invest in research. We recognize the critical role that research plays in the development of all nations. Uh, the U.S. is the most advanced of all the countries in the world, and they owe it to R&D, research and development, and innovation. And California is globally um, rated as, it used to be rated as the seventh, then it became the sixth, and today it is the fifth largest economy in the world. And it's just one state 
in the U.S. And they owe this prestige to the fact that the Silicon Valley um, is created in California. And it has everything to do with research and development and innovation. Our uh, investment in research for the year 2019 was 5 billion. For the year 2020, it increased to 7.5 billion. And for the year 2021, uh, years kept driving us. And we had to, I said, look, we can't take it to 10 billion. And we don't have so much money. But he insisted that we must increase it. And we increased it from 7.5 billion last year to 8.5 billion naira this year. After the formalities were laid out by these top personalities in the tertiary education sector and subsector, a photo session was kicked off. The program started earnestly with the coordinator, Professor Fagbong, giving an overview of global university ranking and the place of higher education system in the knowledge economy. This was followed by two days of plenary discussions on topics including roles of relevant research infrastructure and the impact of innovation research outputs on ranking and competitiveness of universities presented by Emiratis Professor Olufemi Adebisi Bamiro and Innovations, Technological Transfer and Blended Learning in Nigerian Universities, The Way Forward for Global Competitiveness by Dr. Ade, among others. The capacity building workshop, having outlined all the key issues Nigeria faces in its bid to become a hub for research and development in the knowledge economy. It also produced a roadmap that, if well implemented, will result in not only boosting the prestige of tertiary education institutions in the country, but it will also produce a new breed for Nigerian graduates and academics who are expected to dictate the tone for technological advancement in the future. Now, just like Martin Luther King Jr., TED Fund has its own dream. Even though we face the difficulties of today and tomorrow, TED Fund still has a dream. And it's a dream that is deeply rooted, in our case, in the Nigerian dream. We have a dream that one day across the lush green hills of the global stage, the children of Nigerians and the children of the world's most developed industrial countries will be able to sit down together at a table of intellect as peers and equals rather than donors and beggars. We have a dream that our little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be punished for their lack of education, but celebrated for the product of their creativity and innovation. We have a dream today. And that is the paradigm shift. Join us again on the next edition of the program. But until then, thank you for stopping by. Good night.